In this short video, I simply want to introduce what the book review assignment is. Your job is to select a book from a list of books that I've given you and then to uh, review it. You're not simply repeating what the book says or simply discussing what the book's topic is. You're going to develop an argument or a conclusion about the book itself. Now, this central summary statement of your argument is called your thesis. Your book review must have a thesis. It doesn't matter what your thesis concludes as long as it's evaluative about the book you have selected. You can conclude that the book was bad or is good or bad in some ways and good in others. You can praise it or criticize it in any way you choose. The summary statement of your thesis should be near the beginning of your book review, but you can't simply state your thesis at the very outset because your own reader may not be familiar with the book itself. You need a short introduction where you briefly state the book's topic, you know, what the book's about, and the book's thesis, what the author concludes about the topic. I should note that all the books on the list that you can choose from have their own uh, thesis. They all develop an argument. You, uh, your introduction, therefore, should you know start by sort of uh, explaining the book's topic and thesis, and what, what you can do in several sentences. And when you finish, you're then uh, provided the reader enough information that he or she can understand your own thesis about the book. Your introduction, therefore, should conclude with a forceful statement summary of your thesis, your conclusions about the book. The rest of the book review develops this thesis. Each subsequent paragraph should be a different reason why you believe as you do. I should note that it's important that you evaluate the book's thesis in developing your own thesis about the book. Don't just develop your thesis based on superficial aspects of the book, such as uh, it's too long or it lacks pictures or whatever. While these uh, things can certainly be brought in as part of your thesis development, you need to include a complete evaluation of the author's central points and uh, arguments. For example, is the author's thesis clear? Do you think the author provides enough evidence to support his or her thesis, and is the research adequate? You know, maybe the book's old. Is, is it outdated? Uh, has the author considered sufficient evidence that might counter his or her thesis? Is the author biased? Is there something the author could have done to strengthen his or her thesis? Has the author considered countervailing arguments adequately? Is the thesis argument well organized? These are all things that you should consider in evaluating the book. And again, you can consider more superficial factors, uh, like it's whether it's too long or has pictures or how it's bound or something. But the central point of your argument is, is, is evaluating the author's thesis. In any event, after you've fully developed your, your reasons in a number of well-crafted paragraphs, you need to have an adequate conclusion. Your conclusion should remind your reader, again, of what your overall thesis is, sort of tying in all the points you've made. You need to leave your reader with your central thesis. The more points you make in support of your thesis, the stronger your thesis becomes. Now, I should say that in regard to length, there is no... Uh, required number of pages or words or anything but uh, people keep asking me so I'll say the average is you know three to five four to six pages somewhere in there uh, most uh, much shorter I should say and you, you're really probably not providing enough reasons to adequately support your thesis and if you go way over five or six pages you know you're up into dozens of pages or something chances are you're really being either redundant or verbose Let's be clear, this is not a research paper. The only book you have to read or, or even see is the book you have selected. There's no need for a bibliography or works cited pages. The only citation you need is of the book you have selected itself, and you should put that at the top of your first page. And you should follow the format that's shown in this slide. You start with the author's name, and then you have a comma, and then you have the title of the book. And the title, of anything published is either italicized or underlined. And you follow that with a period. Then you have the place of publication, the, the city and state, followed by a colon, and then the name of the publisher, then a comma, and then the year in which it was published, followed by a period. 
you can get all this information and all the bibliographic data in the first few pages of the book. Because this isn't a research paper, you won't need to have footnotes or endnotes or really any citations in the text itself. If, however, you do use a quote from the book, you want to have it in quotation marks and at the end you can just put the page number that you've selected. That's after the quotation is over with but before the period as shown in this slide. Grammar and writing style do count. This is your serious writing and uh, so take it seriously. You, uh, you should always proofread your work after you've completed it. Don't just rely on spell check or grammar check from your computer. Uh, common mistakes include not only misspellings and problems with capitalization, but passive voice or issues of tense. Sometimes I'll see a lot of improper or unclear pronouns. A lot of people end sentences with prepositions. There's an awful lot of split infinitives. And I even see some double, double negatives. In general, there's just an awful lot of awkward sentence construction. So try to work on all of those. Please uh, be aware of the following points. Let's tell you how you should, should structure your paper. Use 12-point font. Use double-spaced lines, double space, and uh, there's no need for a title page. You can just staple your paper together. You should turn your paper in in hard copy. Electronic copies sent as attachments won't be accepted unless there's an explicit permission granted because there's some uh, extenuating circumstance. Just, just put your name on the first page of the paper. Don't, don't forget to put it on. And you can turn your paper in early, but it must be in by the end of the class time on the deadline date because tardy papers will be penalized. Finally, of course, plagiarism won't be tolerated. You're an honest person, so this won't be a problem. The professor, as in me, I'm well aware of all the books on the list. I've read them, and I know what has been written about them. Moreover, all the papers will be scanned into online databases for possible plagiarism of published or online sources. So don't, don't be foolish and try that because you'll never get away with it. Okay, so you want to know how, how you're going to be graded. That makes sense. Well, your grade is going to be determined by a number of factors. Is your introduction sufficient? I mean, does it adequately summarize in a few sentences the book's topic and thesis well? And is your thesis statement evaluative? Is it clear and forceful at the end of the introduction? Does the rest of your book review work to directly support this thesis? You know, is, is uh, the evidence that you provide sufficient to defend or develop the thesis? And in a related way, does, uh, does the book review consider the book's thesis and its evaluation? Or is it simply based on superficial matters? You know, do you consider the development of the author's thesis? So also, you know, is the conclusion sufficient to your book review? Is the book citation at the beginning correctly formatted and placed? You know, how's the writing and, and the grammar? Obviously, that's very, very important. All of these things I will consider when I assign a grade. So uh, in reading the book, I think you should be aware of how you should read these books now that you know how it will be graded. And that will be discussed in a short video that, that should follow this.